especially since it would push us towards the arm. But that's just something you get used to. Hit. So I'll go out a little farther. And I'll start turning the boat so that so that as we come into it, we're almost heading directly into it. Okay? I mean, it doesn't matter what we're doing today, but it's just one of those things that you learn. So then the question becomes, when you have a twisty, turny rubber, you got to figure out if it's worth crossing the current to get to the eddies. Because when you cross the current, you're going to lose a little time because you have a stronger current for a while. Then do you go 90 degrees or do you take a tangent? And we're always playing with that because and every river is different. So you got a pack of boats that come up, five, six top pro boats, all about the same speed. And then you have this tremendous jockeying for position, you know. Let's see who comes out. And usually, most of the time, you'll end up joining back up again. Sometimes you can drop somebody out of, out of the race, though. One less guy to worry about at the end. Well, the big ones, a hundred boats. Yeah, hundred boats. That's why there's just not that many people doing it, Lisa. It's just it's not it's an obscure sport. It really is. It's hard. It's good. Everything's wonderful, but yeah, I know it. Well, no, we'll just, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just put it out today. When we get ready to leave, we'll rinse it off. But last day. Nope, nope, we'll just put it right where we uh, put it together. We'll prop it in there, and, and I'll, I'll secure it in case it gets windy. But, although, usually when it's in there, you don't have to worry about it because it's, the arm keeps it from swinging. You'll see. Catching anything, kid? Nope. There's a guy down there in the boat, four or five rods out. He hasn't caught anything either. A frog. A frog, yeah. <laughs> See right here on the left, there's no current. So normally we would be coming right up along those. Our paddles. The person on the shore side, his paddle would be in the weeds. But there's, it's so much faster. If you pick up a mile an hour, a mile and a half going upstream, you can make a big difference in a race. Even if you only do it for like a minute. See, the nice thing about these boats is they build them to go in, in salt water so everything's stainless steel or aluminum, mostly stainless steel, whereas the boats we use don't, and they, all the shit in them rusts if you take them in the salt water and don't rinse them out real good. Yeah. Well, we can. I, he, he doesn't. He hasn't when I was here last time. But just at the end. I'm just glad to see you don't have to put the cover on. I hate zipping these things in the cover. Okay, so here's one of those corners. So make sure that, that, that well, it's already 
offset that way. If it pushes us, it would push us onto the Yama. But if you had a boat with no no support and it hit you and pushed you sideways like it does right there. See it's pushing us sideways, feel that? Yep, okay. It could flip you right over, especially in the spring races where it's real strong runoff. Like the Susquehanna River. Oh yeah. The most common race is about two hours, 15 miles. That's most common. A lot of three, four hour races. Then the Triple Crown races are the 70, which is 70 miles, about eight hours. Michigan, which is 120, which is 14 or 15 hours for the fast guys. And then Canada, which is 120 miles, which is about, let's see, six, 10 and a half, 13 and a half hours. And then there's the, uh, those are the pro races. But really serious. And then the 90 miler on Labor Day up at the Adirondacks is 90 miles and that fastest times, fast times there are about 12 or 13 hours over three days. That's more of a, it's pretty though, it's a, I call it a high speed capstone cruise for the season. Some guys are all serious about it and shit. You don't win anything, you win a plaque of wood. That's why I, uh, hut, I switched to the team boats, especially after uh, 2007. I, and bring between four and seven, seven or eight people along in one boat. Just have a fun, good team building, you know? Yeah. Adventure. They want to talk about an adventure, that's an adventure. I wish, you know, I wish I could still do that race, but never again. Hip. Actually, what we'll do is we'll slide over in this little little quiet spot here on the left and grab a drink. That's all right with you. I mean, maybe you don't even want a drink. <laughs> and you can take one anytime you want if I... Hell no. Got to keep you running. I mean, you can't have you running out of juice, you know. Okay, you can stop and paddle and grab a drink there. See, in races we have uh, three eighths inch outer diameter uh, tubes with velcro on the ends of them, velcro on the side of the boat, and then you just grab the tube, stick it in your mouth, take a drink, put it back on the boat so it doesn't get in the bottom of the boat where all the nasty water is, you know? And they're about six, seven feet long depending on where you're sitting in the boat and where you're bottom. Turn it over. Yep, there you go. another preening show for us. Fishermen ain't catching any fish, but they must think they're gonna. Hup. Hup. Good. Get it nice and straight. Work on getting it nice, put it in right, right alongside you. Drive down with that top arm, drive down with the bottom arm while you pull back. Just or more driving down. So let's say we rode 12 miles yesterday. Doesn't that make sense that we would want to ride 20 today? Okay. Well, yeah, you can do it. I know you can do it. Oh, later in the afternoon, I thought, I don't know, you tell me, I was thinking grab something to eat. I was gonna, I'm gonna take a shower, a quick one anyhow, but I don't mind you taking a couple showers a day. <laughs> and then uh, grab something to eat, grab a shower. And if you wanted to, we could, I don't know when you want to do the tour of the Baldy and, and go see your conservatory and go and grab some, some dish soap and then come back and bike. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, just take a little, just 
don't use much soap so it doesn't dry out so bad. You know? Do a little do a little do a little pad down on the foo foo and you got it all set, man. Right? <laughs> no, I, I just use the bar of soap that's there. Huh? Oh I don't know, I have I'm not I'm not using your shower. There used to be a bar of soap in the corner. On the, on the little shelf. Are you talking about the one in your room? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I thought there was one on the floor, maybe. We'll figure it out. I'll inspect it. We'll supply you up good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember that much about it. Hut. No, it's just wet. It's wet and salty. I wonder why this corner has to be such a big sweeping corner, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you want you said you want to maybe buy some shit in that gift shop. Oh, that's nice. You know, for me I wouldn't need to, but you know, no, I think we just do the bike ride as a bike ride. <laughs> <laughs>